so my battery and my camera is almost dead but uh, I was gonna film putting the engine back in anyway because it's the same as uh, the uh, 2012 E150 I took the motor in and out of um, just two more cylinders and lights and sirens and stuff like that but uh, let's have a look where I'm at Now you see how long my chain is for the, I just did that so I can get it off the, the stand. Um, to lift this thing in and out of the vehicle, you want that boom of the cherry picker as close to the engine as possible. So I'll shorten that chain up to where there'll only be maybe one link between the adapter and the boom. It'll be very, very close. The only thing I got left to do now is uh, I'm going to throw the harness on it. It's laying over there in the floor, underneath the vehicle out of harm's way. So I'll put that on the engine, so I have to deal with it when it's in the chassis. And I've got a torque. Uh, the engine was just swinging too much to uh, torque the uh, motor mounts. So I'm just going to double tor check the torque on the exhaust manifolds. I always double check, triple check them. And torque the motor mounts and on both sides and that's it i'm gonna go ahead and put the dipstick in because that's an exposed exposed hole there um that's all i can think of i will sit it back in button it up and when i get it all together i'm gonna turn the camera back on because i want to get the uh, hours so what the hours is and we'll see what this thing sounds like when we hit the key for the first time so I want to share a quick word about um, heavy and jo involved jobs such as this one. Uh, there's all sorts of little things that make these a job goes good, uh, not come back, and you know, someone in the shop may see someone working on a job like this and think nothing's getting done, done, thinking they're slow or whatever. I give you for instance. All right, so I've got a brand new radiator hose. Just getting a new bottom hose and a new oil cooler, both of which are still attached to the chassis. Well, a lot easier to change this hose now than later. It bolts the frame right there with that clamp. There's the lines going to the oil cooler, and it goes up to the degas bottle right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off, get that swapped out with a new one. Notice the pile of fluid that was leaking out of the back of the engine. All right, so. We've got uh, that oil right there. That needs to be cleaned up. So I got a spray brake clean in there, clean it all up, dry it out. You know. Then we've got a stud, exhaust stud that stayed in the um, converter assembly. All right. So I've got uh, new hardware, and I got a new stud. I don't want to try to salvage that one. You know. So now I gotta get that off there, whether it be cutting it or holding on with vice grips and turning it, you know, whatever the case may be, but it's gotta be dealt with before I can put the engine back in the chassis. So little things like that and can prolong the job. So I'll get those taken care of and situated and then we'll put that back in. Uh, we're ready to start this thing. Now I've just got it to the point where it'll hold fluids. So, particularly on diesel, I like to do this. I'll get it to that point and then I'll just I'll go ahead and start it and let it run and just sit idle the rest of the time while I finish putting the front end on it and get it back ready to drive. So, I really don't need to do it with this one, but, uh, you know, I'm ready to start this thing. Uh, let's see here. Do you have an hour meter on this thing anywhere? Amps, volts. Sometimes they put them on the side of the doghouse. Nothing there. Nothing there. Whoa. Alright, so we're going to start this. Um, there's no fuel in the um, engine, basically. 
but uh, we're gonna look at our. Uh, what am I trying to say here? We're gonna hold the throttle to the floor so it won't fuel the engine. We're gonna crank it over till we get oil pressure. So there's the throttle. So we put it right to the floor. I'm gonna crank her over. So we've got, you know, lifters that are dry. Um, you know, basically a dry engine. I primed the filter, so the filter has oil in it. And, uh, man, I'm tired. I'm tired, I'm rambling. So we're going to continue to do that. I don't want it to build oil pressure off uh, auto RPM. I'd rather do it off uh, cranking RPM. So we'll let the star, uh, the star is cool enough, we'll try it again. Alright, we'll let it sit and uh, let the star cool down and then crank it again. Alright, round two. Normally when I start these vehicles up, I'll let them run and uh, while I'm putting the front end back together, as you can see, I've still got to put the um, grill and hook up the auxiliary lights, things like that. But we had another exhaust leak and I'd already got the parts for it, but I was going to do it on the, the drive-on lift so I don't have to crawl around on the floor anymore. But our, our drive-on lift's tied up, so I got to crawl around on the floor because just with it running, just it stunk out of heaven. So, one of these nuts was missing. So I said, well, I'll just put new hardware and a new gasket on where the leak was. And it's very interesting when I crawled under here. Let me get under here. What I found. The two fasteners that were still there were finger tight. I could just take them off by hand and when I separated the pipe there was no gasket no gasket at all so very interesting very uninteresting so let me remedy that I'll put a gasket in it new hardware I'll start it up again, see how it runs, and uh, we'll take it off of the lift.
officially out of pieces except for AC cap. I don't refill the air conditioning yet. Refill that and then we'll go for a test drive. Got the hose done. Go for the doghouse and see that. Let it finish warming up and we'll check the heater system, make sure it's not leaking and it looks okay. Then we'll put the doghouse cover on. It's kind of aggravating to do it. You got all these pieces to go with it. It's real tight. I mean, the way the, they redesigned the glove box, usually it's a panel you just take off. Made it easier to get the doghouse cover off. But um, it's a little more aggravating. I don't want to put it on one time. I don't want to take it off much time. This all system sounds a lot better. It's nice and quiet. I'll be happy. Well, she's outside for the first time in some time. Out on a daylight. Filling up the air conditioner. And um, I haven't put this panel on yet. Took this panel off because it's easier to get the doghouse off. They've got some sort of uh, GPS or something hooked to the data link. And uh, that's the panel clips in right here, so it covers all that up. I need to check for codes, make sure I don't have any codes when I get in and test driving this thing. So I'll put that panel on last when I'm done. Got about 27 minutes left on the vacuum. Just got to do a leak test after that. Got a coolant leak on that one, AC leak on that one. And fun times are ahead. No quicker than I got that one done. That one's next. That's got a 6.0 diesel in it with an oil leak. God only knows what's wrong with that one. And then I got the two over there. I got the white one. Pay no attention to the trash and the fence. The place looks like it's going to be condemned any day now. Anyway, the white one, the there's no compression on number eight cylinder. Motor's got to come out to five four three valve. And the red one, backfiring through the intake. It's a six liter, so it needs some head work. Got a stuck valve in it. Good times. Good times. But it could be worse. I could uh, have nothing to do at all. <laughs>